It's been five and a half months since we've been together in person for worship or congregational life. That's about five and a half months longer than anyone expected. Since we first received the shelter in place order in March, Ascension staff and leaders have been imagining when and how we might resume our common life. Resume task forces have been studying and planning. The staff has learned a whole new skill set. Our Congregation Council and other leaders have been overseeing all this studying, planning, and learning, ensuring our decisions are faithful, wise, and cautious. Earlier this summer, it seemed the crisis might be lifting. So we made plans to test our protocols for in-person worship, throwing the doors open wide to you and those who long to be with us. We started dreaming of godly play and coffee hour and congregational singing and vitality talks and Holy Communion. But the crisis has not lifted. And those of us whom you have entrusted with leadership have come to realize that there are higher priorities than simply opening the doors. One of those priorities is our witness. That is, how do the decisions we make reflect the faith we profess? With that missional priority in mind, our Resume task force is set to work anew, crafting two Resume plans, cleverly titled Plan A and Plan B. Plan A describes three switches that all need to be flipped on at the same time in order for us to open our doors safely. Those three switches are qualitative data, theological integrity, and intentionality. Qualitative data. We are relying on a handful of our members who have access to and the ability to interpret the complex data that comes at us every day. We are all waiting for that data to settle and for some authoritative person to signal the all clear. But as you know, the numbers change daily and they differ depending on zip code. So what data pertains to us? What is our primary community? What is acceptable risk and who is that authoritative voice? The second switch, theological integrity. From the first whiff of viral unrest, we recommitted ourselves to the principle that everything we do at Ascension is done out of love of God and love of neighbor. That is, we put our own needs and desires aside in order to tend to the needs and the desires of the neighbor. And now, because of our growing awareness of systemic racism and economic disparity, we have added a second principle to our list, attention to privilege. And now we are asking new questions. Is it faithful or respectful to re resume our normal lives on this financially stable, resource-blessed, relatively isolated North Shore while our brothers and sisters in other faith communities struggle simply to live? Is that who we are? The third switch intentionality. Imagine that we were able to agree on a data set and benchmarks and that we determined we were acting out of love of neighbor and not out of privilege. Imagine, imagine that those two switches flipped to on simultaneously. But what about that third switch? Intentionality. More simply, if we were open, would you come? The Pew Research Center recently conducted a study of Baptist churches in the United States. Among their findings was this jaw-dropping realization. While 70% of those surveyed thought that their churches ought to be open in some fashion, only 12% of them said that they would attend. Simply put, fewer than one in six active adults who want their churches open say that they would attend themselves. I wonder what your intention would be. So, even if all the data lined up with our theological principles, but you didn't intend to return to worship for very good reasons, even with safety protocols in place, why would we do that? Plan A is very hopeful and optimistic and thoughtful, but also very complicated, riddled with what ifs and rabbit holes. That leads me to plan B, which is simple, safe, 
sound, and bracing. Plan B proposes that we simply take discussion of in-person worship and congregational life off the table until next year. That we stop talking about meeting again for now. Plan B suggests that we continue to offer high quality pre-recorded worship for the foreseeable future and design a robust calendar around our four mission areas, faith formation, worship and the arts, community engagement, and operations. Elegant in its simplicity, Plan B is also heartbreaking in its implications. After much discussion and prayer, your congregation council, leaders, and staff have all agreed that Plan B is the best plan for us to pursue at this time. That is, we will not plan to worship again in person in the building until 2021. The two resume task forces have now been merged into a single congregational life team tasked with imagining and implementing meaningful opportunities for congregational life. Our musicians, intern and I, are designing a variety, a variety of worship opportunities and modalities, both for Sunday worship and for upcoming festivals and seasons. Our educators will be in touch with various learning groups to, about ways to continue learning and growing in the faith together. Our community engagements will be revitalized, so we maintain strong partnerships with those partners whom we value. Our operations leader continue to monitor all the day-to-day -day work of our congregation and are pleased to report that our financial position is strong because you have been so faithful. We will continue offering regular weekday office hours. We are in contact with the many outside groups that use our building, but questions remain. What about choirs? What about concerts? What about coffee? There is much to discuss. We will keep you informed of our conversations and show you the calendar we create. It continues to be a privilege to be your pastor, especially now that we are so rigorously challenged. Thank you for your faithfulness to our ministry and our ministry partners. Thank you for your patience with the stop and start nature of some of our deliberations. Thank you for your kindness to our staff and leaders as we seek to lead you faithfully into a future that only God can imagine. I am sad to say that it may be many months before we are able to offer one another a hearty handshake. It may be many months until we are able to sing with one voice in our beautiful sanctuary. It may be many months until we are able to appropriately acknowledge all the grief and the fear and the anxiety of this complicated time. But until then, we remain united in our love for one another, for those whom we are privileged to serve, and for God in whose name we serve. Please feel free to ask questions, offer insight, suggest opportunities, and please continue to pray for our ministry that whether we are together or apart, our witness is strong and our ministry vital. And thanks for asking. <laughs>